as we come to a close of 2022, I just want us to also have some reflection on how we've come as a nation. <coughs> the last 47 years has not been an easy ride for us as a nation. Our country's peculiarity is much uh, more different than many democracies on the face of planet Earth. Many democracies, they come from, uh, for instance, you go to uh, Great Britain, the mother of all uh, democracy. They got one language. Their society has been built in, in over centuries. Uh, their, their parliament, uh, they, they don't have a written constitution like we have. Uh, you know, it's common practice that has gone into common law and you know, a person oppression law that they pass from time to time. So ours is different. The most diverse nation on the face of planet Earth. We were fused into one union uh, in 1975, driven by the party that I lead today, the Congo Party. Uh, and so for me as a person leader of the Congo Party, the honors of me is far greater uh, than many other parties simply because the party was responsible for deliverance of our country's nationhood. And it's really up, up to Congo uh, Party's uh, members today and the party today to really rise up to, and to echo our democracy, uh, consolidate our union as a nation of a thousand tribe, and to ensure we pass on into the future a uh, better country that is stronger in the system of service delivery, and that is uh, stronger and better in terms of the ambience of our law and order environment, uh, and that is delivering to the expectations of our people in as far as every other facet of uh, service delivery is concerned. So in this, uh, on this note, I just want to acknowledge every one of you. The last three years we've uh, tried to do certain things. Uh, chief amongst them is to grow our economy to be a 200 billion in economy because we looked into the fiscal space we have. We need to have the buffer, the space, to be strong economically and resilient. When we're strong economically, we're able to ensure that we are financing our mandate. And financing our mandate in sectors like health, education, law and order, uh, of course, the enabling infrastructures, all has a, a cost attached to it. And the cost must be financed. And so our focus in the last three years has been to grow the economy, but none of us saw COVID-19 coming. None of us saw what we, uh, President Putin when he decided to invade Ukraine. Uh, that happened and that had a toll on the global economy. Uh, as a small uh, import dependent economy uh, that is impacted by global shocks you know, as far as the economy is concerned, we will, we will live through the last two and three years. That was one of the hardest, not just for a nation, but all nations on the face of planet Earth. But the three years we have survived, we have looked into how we could improvise and improve on where we are. This this, uh, for us, after three years of trying a uh, flatter public service structure, uh, we have to admit that we need to restore back the Office of Chief Secretary. And so, this parliament, when we uh, came together uh, to form this uh, government in Lolowata, one of the key resolutions was the restoration of uh, the Office of Chief Secretary. And so, we've made an amendment. Uh, we've now, by law, we installed back the Office of Chief Secretary and we now, this morning, announcing to our country that this office is fully restored and the Secretary of Prime Minister and NEC will assume the full responsibility of the Office of the Chief Secretary to government. And I just want to take this time to acknowledge Ambassador Pomalio as the intimate Secretary of the Prime Minister and NEC. He will then assume the role as Chief Secretary of the State. I want to thank uh, Secretary Ty Sampson, Secretary Dr. Eric Kua and the team uh, at, uh, at CACC, as well as uh, our FLC and the entire team for making uh, the change possible and for us to make this come to, uh, come to fruition. But as we bring and restore the Office of Chief Secretary, uh, suppose, uh, it comes with an added layer of scrutiny on what new department heads are doing out there in our country. Our country cannot move miles if we as leaders 
both elected leaders as well as appointed leaders if we are not at work. And today, facing December 25 and often the recess that comes with uh, the, uh, late in December and early, early uh, start of the year, uh, instead of taking up uh, and be on holiday, I just want to appreciate the current leadership that you are still at work in the various offices that you hold and let me step back as uh, your Prime Minister. I just want to appreciate all of you, the final heads, head of constitutional offices, head of our security forces, uh, head of our uh, statutory bodies. Thank you very much for being at work and coming to this occasion uh, uh, to acknowledge the fact that the government has restored the office of Chief Secretary. I just want to say thank you very much. Our country has all the challenges that any emerging nations would have, uh, but we also have greater opportunities. Our opportunities are second to none, especially as we stay in the face of the Asian marketplace. Our opportunity as a country remains endless, but it must start with us, working to the best of our ability. As elected leaders, we are time about five years in between. But you appointed leaders, uh, you are waiting very well, and some of you have lived through a few governments now, uh, because you are men and women in your own rights, you have uh, served uh, faithfully in the designations that you occupy. And so you will live on. And if it is not you, then the system you manage will live on. And I always, uh, in one or two of you as we uh, discuss them, I always uh, tell you, the country you and me retire into is a country we have built. Uh, we have not built. I repeat this question. I uh, repeat this statement. The country you and me will retire into is the country we have built or we have not built. <coughs> Some have second countries to retire into. I don't know about you, but uh, whether you have second country to retire to, but I will not retire into a second country. I see Mr. Bruce Alabaster here. Yeah, sorry for picking me, but uh, he chose to be a Papua New Guinea and this is the place he will retire. Married here, stayed here, lived here, just to be a Papua New Guinea citizen. So the country that we will retire to is the country that we are constructing today. So I want each and every one of you, I want to appeal to the inner recess of your concept. Choose to do what is right for your country. Time is limited. As sure as it is that there is a sunset this evening, it is definite that there is a sunset in your life in your, in your career in your I repeat, as sure as it is that there is a sunset this evening, there is a sunset in your life, in your productive life. And as we are privileged to be given this opportunity by our people, <coughs> for those of us who are elected, and by your people's government, for those of you who are appointed, I will need to rise about petty issues, rise about personal interests, Rise about what you can do for yourself in this fortnight spectrum and see the next generation. Is it okay? <coughs> Many times we are enclosed into the spectrum of a fortnight. Year. We just look into the next payday. Let's look beyond the payday and see the next generation. What is it that we are contributing to this <coughs> country? And as we restore the office of the Chief Secretary, the greater will be the scrutiny on your accountability. As we restore, let me repeat, as we restore the office of the Chief Secretary, greater will be scrutiny of your performance. <coughs> because we will restore the requirement of law for you to report back to government by the end of 31st of March every year. Lack of reporting is an offense that will see termination of the parliament. Constitutional office of the <coughs> For so long, we've been operating in a modus operandi where recording has not been an important part of our policy. The office of Chief Secretary, this one, this time around, will be different from the last Chief, chief Secretary. I lived through the last two Chief Secretaries, I lived through the last two governments. For me personally, I've seen how those offices have operated, especially in the last tenancy of the last government. 
The Office of Chief Secretary was just running the Prime Minister's agenda. That will not be the case. The Office of Chief Secretary will run a mess of agenda. We have already issued to each and every one of you your key result areas to your ministers. The key result areas is the benchmark in which your performance will be assessed. Your reporting back to government before 31st of March 2023 will have three fundamental recording <coughs> benchmarks of measurables. What we have achieved in the last concluded work year and basically is encapsulated in your work plan as well as measure against the key result areas we've given you and the result areas we've given you, uh, you now have now a plan to incorporate that into the next year's work plan. <coughs> so you, your report next year will be simple. You've given you this much money, that was your plan, you've done this, you're reporting back on this. And what you've done the last year in the context of retiring your own department or agency's plan for the you know, plan that you are pretty busy. I want to introduce the medium term deployment plan for that is to be launched early next year. As you work to retire 22 plan, all of you would have contributed and if you have not yet contributed to the shape and make of MDTP4, then you have this two or three weeks to make a B run to the National Planning Department as well as the Prime Minister's Department and the Central Agencies Committee for us to all contribute to what must be a clearer MDTP4 for us to achieve the outcomes for our country in the next four, four years that is coming. Next four years is critical. We will be celebrating our 50 years of being an independent nation in 2025. The hardest question is what is there for us to celebrate? Is our law and justice sector functioning effectively, efficiently and professionally? Is our education sector functioning better, giving quality education to our children and securing the future? Is our health system delivering to expectations? Is our public sector system functioning with no inefficiency and bottlenecks? Uh, these are critical questions that we must answer and unbundle in the next two or three years as we prepare our country to live life beyond 50 years of nationhood. And so serious work needs to be taken by our generation. Never before has our generation been given an opportunity to construct a better future. It is our time today, elected leaders and our party leaders for us to rise up collectively. I ask all of you to take the recess of this festive period. Not recess for holiday, but recess into the inner sanctum of your own departments. Take a deep appreciation of what we've done in 22 in the last few years. Especially in the context of retiring MDTP3 and my own government's uh, KRS that, given, uh, that has been given to you. And speaking of the KRS, if the KRS are unachievable, for goodness sake, this is not 10th month. You have every right to your ministers to point to us. Mr. Prime Minister, you ask us to do this, but this is the budget constraint. This is the constraint of law. This is the constraint of the operating environment we are in. We feel this is a better alternate and offer solution as you uh, propose that this carries and trusted upon you is unachievable. You know, at this juncture, let me introduce to you all Sir Isi Kebao. Sir Isi Kebao, the Sunday last week, I had the privilege of being with the 50th Iridium in class of medical school. And Sir Isi Kebao was honored as a guest of honor there. He was amongst the pioneer six graduates of the class of 1972. And uh, he was honored. The thing I think about Sir Isi Kemba was uh, he could have, in 1980, in his own life testimony, he was offered a, a position at Royal Prince Hospital in Melbourne, or something, I think it's Royal Prince Hospital in Melbourne. He chose to remain in his own country, to work and save his people. He didn't pick up the pets and privilege and luxury of working in the 
equally competent, he will speak earlier on in his life, but he chose to remain here to serve his country tirelessly. You are like that. You chose to remain here. But the greater thing about people like say is he came up. Let them go to Facebook. Let them go to WhatsApp. Let them criticize for their work to find solutions where they're placed. They work to find solutions within the constraint they're placed in. In the office, in the place of work. And I was reduced to embarrassment because people like him have far greater talent than I have. Far greater contribution to the country than I am contributing. And if he could remain faithful to his duty, 50 years of unbroken service, of total loyalty and service to his country, then you and me deserve to honor that generation even better. The generation of the Somalis, the generation of the fathers and mothers of our country, who brought us thus far, <coughs> with little resources, they held our country in total unity. They preserved our democracy, the sanctity of our union. They saved our country to the best of their ability. The call now is ask not what your country can give to you, it's already given you enough. You belong to only under 2% of Papuanians who are employed. And the public service, you are better employed than most. Ask not what your country can do, but what you must give. There is no other class of Papua New Guineans who have a better opportunity <laughs> to save the future of the country than you and me today. Let's not waste time. Let's not squander time. Let's not waste resources. Let's not squander resources. Let's not play around and monkey monkey around. I expect <coughs> this what comes. I am not a new government. I am a continuing government. By 31st of next year, every one of you report must come in as to how you help yourself in running the department. If you're not submitting reports, submit your resignation. Simple as that. We must now step up. Law requires Public Finance Management Act and Public Service Management Act requires of reports to come into the central government, not for us to be punitive, but for us to look into how you're doing so that we assist you get better. We resource you better. We empower you better. We work with you to eliminate the impediments so that together we can work for the next work here and build on to achieve outcomes for our country. Ambitions, goals have been set. It is national leadership's prerogative to set visions and aspirations. The journey we are traveling on is not a new journey we're taking. It is not a new road we are traveling on. That is the same road our father saw in 1975 where we don't leave one place or one person behind. Where this country becomes an equal place for all, <coughs> irrespective of ethnicity, language, culture, religion, gender, whatsoever. And when we took back office, we took our country and put it back on the road that Somalia launched in 2010, the Vision 2050 road that he launched. Take back PNG philosophy, making PNG the richest black Christian nation uh, identity that this government is associated with. If you look, if you care to look at Vision 2050, it talks about this in its own form. This decade talks about making the economic transition. This is the economic decade in the 40 year time frame of the Vision 2050. In this decade, we must make the economic transition from being an economy that is dependent on aids and grants to an economy that is self-sustaining. And so we are walking the same path that our fathers, especially the part of our country, Somalia, mounted in 2010. He mounted based on how he saw the country in the 1970s. And I just want you all, as we take research this December, Go back to your organizations. Uh, take stock of how we've done in 2022. I know 2022 had a big punctuation mark in between. A punctuation mark was the election period where all of us were in, uh, in, in, in uh, deep process because politics had to, had to come and go. 
but we've wrapped, now we've come from the government has set up, my government is set up, my vision is the same vision of uh, vision 2050. Uh, by the end of uh, 2050, we want our country to be uh, middle income in Asia. I've given one way, which is Black Christian Asia, but that is the same destination that someone has made in 2010. By 2050, we must be the top 50 nations on planet. What is wrong with having that mission? We are a nation that is intensely blessed with diversity of resources, including our human beings. So let us work towards this one. The onus is on all of us, ministers and appointed leaders, because it's really the ministers who are running the different portfolios that all of you work within and under. And so for us as ministers and in cabinet, and for all of you who are leading those various organizations, I just want you to uh, go back text stock and realize that there is no one else except yourself who are placed to make it happen for our people. As we prepare next year, as we come early on, there will be another program called Road to 50 Years and Beyond. We will, uh, we will mount this. Uh, and so as we, uh, as we launch our wisdom, <coughs> make a part of our MTDP for early next year, I, the one of you will come again. Uh, we will mount uh, activities for next year and for the next two, three years to beyond 50 years of nationhood. Uh, again, all of you will find a space uh, and how we all participate to uh, program our country to live beyond 50 years of nationhood. And so for today, thank you all for showing up week. Uh, we will restore the National Monitoring Authority to report directly to the Chief Secretary and myself. That will be there to also ensure that the districts, the provinces, and the sectors are working. Uh, and that authority will be custodian of uh, making sure that the ticks that needs to be ticked off in as far as our key focus areas are uh, being ticked and to ensure that resources that are allocated. And especially as our government programs to transfer substantial resources from districts and rural provinces, as well as funding our key national government focuses. And the next year, the restoration of the national monitoring authority will be made, but they'll be different. They will not only be uh, filled by us just in the public service, we will try to also embrace key stakeholders in our community. They must be also part of this so it becomes a, a community-wide sort of authority that has all stakeholders inside and they check our government work as we move into uh, the next medium term. Important medium term coming up uh, is in this medium term we will be making uh, the transition out of our 50 years of nationhood. As I said earlier, if you have not yet contributed to MDDP4, uh, make a beeline for secretary planning, uh, as well as our, our chief secretary, uh, and hopefully you could find a space uh, in the MDDP4. Together, that MDDP4 must be a vehicle towards us achieving the big picture for our country that we all have business about. Thank you very much for coming by. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Uh, and, uh, um, travel through the Christmas period and New Year safely. Uh, as I always uh, remind everyone, uh, last night I was, uh, evening I was with uh, some group of, uh, uh, in, in my leisure, I tried to walk in the golf course. I'm going to recruit my client for those who want to play golf. I go to the Royal Fort Mosby Golf Club and, and instead of just walking, you could hit some balls with you. Uh, I was there and there was a, a, a floor of drinks and I said, be like fish. You know what the fish do? They live, they live in, in water, they live in the sea, but they're not drunk. <laughs> they don't allow the water to suffocate them and drown them. They control their environment, they live in the environment, they control their environment. <laughs> so as you travel through uh, this, uh, this December and prepare for the start of uh, 2020 work here, uh, control the environment you're in. Uh, plan for how your department could come into 2023 work here. We look forward to the central agency, we look forward to working with you so that you and me can make better opportunities that we have to save our country for the better going forward. Congratulations, Minister of Pomalia. You are now Chief Secretary Restored. And we look forward to you. We look forward to you working, uh, not as uh, equivalent, but as the boss in the public sector hierarchy. For every uh, public service, uh, and for us to get more importantly, get to achieve things that we can visit to achieve for our people going forward. 
Well done. Well done. Congratulations at this, uh, this time. And we look forward to everyone contributing to make work better. God bless. Okay.